Hello beautiful souls. Welcome to this video about the energies of the September 2022 equinox. My name is Ona Christie and today I'm going to be sharing with you um, first of all a channeled information from my Akashic guidance around these energies of the September 2022 equinox. I'll be also be just introducing this painting that carries a lot of the energies or really relates to this time and it has some healing uh, energy in it so I'll explain about that as well and another channeled message from the Mary figure here and also uh, reading around the energies of, of the equinox here uh, to support us through this time that will be on my Facebook page so if you uh, want to check that out I will leave the link to that below here and also I'll just stay tuned for the end because I'm going to be introducing a new course that I'm going to be offering. So let us start. I'm going to just read verbatim what my Akashic Guides told me and then I'll give a little bit of um, my interpretation around it and so we'll just start right now. This is a tumultuous new beginning. This is a test of wills. A cycle of purification that began in February of 2022 will resolve and begin again now, like the next go-round of it or the underside of it, the revolution first upwards in an arc and now downwards. We are entering another portal, another leg of the journey. That which was initiated at the 2-2 and 2-22 junctures ripened at the Lion's Gate, the 8-8, and will be birthed now through the 11-11. Seeds that were sown are ripening. Seeds that were sown are sprouting. The September 2022 equinox is one of many choice points on the path of planetary ascension. What is a choice point? It is a coming together of potential timelines, a hub, if you will. Those who wish to proceed along a certain predetermined trajectory will select the appropriate exit point made available at this time. This is all a matter of choice. The key to navigating it is to remain impassive, to stand your ground physically, morally, mentally, emotionally. This planet is entering a frequency that will hold you to your truth. As you know, choices that are not aligned to your truth result in chaos, confusion, and suffering. For those who consciously or unconsciously align themselves with illusion or dark energies, this chaos, confusion, and suffering may manifest itself in those around you, leading to apparent benefit for yourself for a time. But ultimately, should you choose this route, your karmic burden will be increased 10,000 fold and it will ultimately catch up to you. For with each choice point, as the earth rises in consciousness, illusion is becoming more and more difficult to uphold. And make no mistake, the earth desires to ascend. The ascending trajectory is a given. That is why with each choice point from here forward, more souls will choose to leave this plane as they cling to their chosen illusion. Should your soul align itself with truth, the illusion within you will be cleared, sometimes forcibly. In this case, the chaos, confusion, and suffering may manifest in your own life and to your own person. This is a part of the process and in no way a punishment. You may know it as a healing crisis. When this is the case, some souls who wish to, to be aligned with truth may also elect to leave the earth plane at this time. These, should they be resonant with the current planetary timeline, will be awarded upgraded physical vessels and enabled to return here or to another location in the galaxy depending on the individual's soul mission and need for healing and recuperation. For those who remain, the way you can be of highest service to others is to hold the joy. Joy is a pure expression of life force, the song of universal love. A lower dimensional being is incapable of joy. They may get off on things, but they cannot vibrate at the level of joy. Those who vibrate at the level of joy are powerful medicine for the earth and humanity. Hold this vibration and you become the remedy. 
do what brings you joy. There's, there is no higher service than this. Okay, so this is really deep stuff and it really relates to some of the videos that I made way early on in this year and at the end of last year. Um, you may recall me talking about and others also talking about this bifurcation of energy, this um, splitting on the earth, right, between the 3D energies going down and falling away and the 5D energy springing up, right? So there's this shift from 3D to 5D, but it's not just like everybody shifts, right? It's like people have to choose sides <laughs> at some level, the soul level. People are choosing sides and they're going to cling to the old or they're going to be really moving forward and actually assisting with bringing up this new beautiful 5D energy, okay? And so that's what they're talking about. And I did a video or a couple of videos back in February about that 222 and the two, the 22222, whatever it was, 222, 2022 portal, right? Which was all about activating the master builder energy on this earth. And I'm feeling like a, a good way to think about it is if you have a piece of land, right, that you want to dedicate to, you know, build a beautiful temple, right? But there's already a building on that. And it may be a temple or it may be a secular building, whatever it is, but that building is so falling in. It's full of mold, it's full of rats and cockroaches, and it's unstable stable and it's got toxic sludge in the basement and it's just not suitable. You know, there are times where you can take a building and restore it, right? And make it into something beautiful. But there are also times where you got to just look at it and say, hey, you know, there is no way that that is ever going to hold the vibration or be able to, to to have that beautiful structure that we need, right, in order to create the temple, the temple that we have in mind. All right, so that is what we're dealing with, right? And so this whole arc, energetic arc from the, the February 222 energies um, all the way through um, the solstice season and through the lion's gate, which for me, a lion's gate is always intense, but this one was like the mother of all lion's gates for me. It felt like just a massive amounts of, of just star energy, uh, star activations. In fact, that's part of what this painting is about, came in during the lion's gate. And what I feel like it was like, that was sort of an activation of the wrecking ball, right? Um, and it's super, it's going to be super, super important to really keep that in mind that this is not the wrecking ball for the planet, right? This, people are going to be saying this is end times. People already are, right? And it is end times for that 3D timeline, right? Um, but remember that a wrecking ball, when it's used properly, clears the way for another beautiful new structure to come and be built there, all right? So, we need to really, really hold that image in mind and intend that, right? Because it is in that intention that it actually will manifest. Okay, so coming out of the lion's gate, I have been feeling, and I just in talking to other light workers as well, a lot of emotional energy coming up and also ancestral energy, okay? So that's where I feel like this particular juncture of the September 2022 equinox is, is really helping us to work with, okay? Because as a, just an incredible gift, right, from the, from the stars, we have a Mercury retrograde right now. Um, Mercury just went into retrograde. It's going to station direct um, on October 2nd. So we have this whole equinox window, this time that is within that Mercury retrograde. Now, Mercury retrograde often gets a really bad rap. It's because it can throw a monkey wrench in the works when when we've got to like move forward or, you know, when we're trying to communicate out outwardly. Um, and it's because we have this do it, do it, do it, do it, right? Get, get it done kind of society. 
and mindset. And so, of course, when Mercury retrograde comes along, what Mercury, when it goes retrograde, is telling us it's time to go within, to do some inner work, to do some inner seeking, to retreat a little bit of the, uh, from the world. That's why the communication goes wonky. You're not meant to be out there trying to, you know, set up a zillion different appointments. It's time to go within. And so this is a really beautiful, beautiful opportunity. I feel like there was one thing that they said was that this is this is really calling us to truth. This planet is entering a frequency that will hold you to your truth. Okay, so this is a great time to really start getting honest with ourselves, maybe do some journaling, do some dream work, um, and, and really identify, uh, you know, what is our, your heart's desire? Why are you here? What's your purpose? And so that's why I'm going to be offering a course. I'm going to keep it affordable and accessible as much as I can. And um, I will be announcing that within the next week or so. And uh, so if you would like to be notified of that, I'm going to put my uh, a link to my newsletter sign up up here and just sign up for that because I'll be notifying through email and um, probably through the channel as well. So feel free to subscribe. Um, but, you know, this Mercury retrograde, don't curse it. <laughs> Embrace it. Use it. It's here as a gift for us. Okay. Um, and then I think it's really worth saying that you know, anytime something has to come down, right? Um, you know, even an old building that is falling over, there's memories attached to that. And some of them are good memories, right? And there's some good things. There's always good. And we may be entering or already in a time of mourning, right? A time of releasing and relinquishing some of these things, of honoring what has occurred, right? Um, and that's why the ancestors are coming forward so strongly right now. Okay, and coming forward both to support us and also to be healed, right, through us. We can consciously do that. And, and healing of the bloodline. I worked with someone recently where we, <laughs> it's not me doing the healing, it's the, the spirit moving through, but it was a bloodline clearing and blood clearing all the way back to first man and first woman. It was very, very powerful. It was within this, this, this period of time here. Um, so that kind of healing is possible. Also, a download that I got during that healing was that, and I think this is related to the Lion's Gate and that, that activation of the, the Wrecking Ball, is that at the higher conscious level, um, this has already been done, okay? And that we are here now to act it out, to manifest it. Um, but it's still important that we be very, very aware and conscious because it, it, it's still within the realm of our choice, right? So our actions and how we choose to respond and react to whatever is happening out, outside of us is, is super critical right now and, and super beautiful, right? Because we, this is, this is why we're here as star seeds, right? This is why we're here. We came here to hold the light and to hold the lantern up of truth and of light to illuminate this time of, of immense darkness that we're about to move or are moving through, right? We're here to hold that light and hold that vibration to really usher in this new 5D reality. Um, Okay, but it's still an experience. Like, we have to experience it. And there will likely, for almost all of us, be grief involved and letting go. And so I encourage, um, you know, whatever ritual, whatever ceremony that if you feel called to do is just just do it, right? And and don't don't hold back with that. Don't hold back with your tears, right? Because those are cleansing. And, um, you know, change, change isn't always easy, but, um, you know, this, this is something that we're here to assist with as healers and as light workers. 
Okay, let's move on to this particular painting here. And this one, I can't remember the exact day I started, but it was somewhere around or shortly after that 222. And when I started her, I thought it was probably Mary Magdalene, but I wasn't sure. And then it, I just kind of started her and then stopped. And she sat there throughout the whole summer, that whole period of time. And then right around uh, shortly after the Lion's Gate, because um, I'd already had her and there was this kind of spiral at her third eye and her hands were there. And so just after the Lion's Gate, I had this incredibly powerful experience of this blue portal opening up in my third eye. And I was told that it was this portal directing a kind of this connection to the star Sirius, right? Which is, Sirius represents the, the central sun, right? That central uh, creative force of the universe. And I was also told that through this portal, we can access our star brethren from Sirius, that um, the Syrian brotherhood is there and we can communicate and receive information, receive healing through this portal, okay? So I I'm also told this painting is an activation to help to activate that in whoever views it. So, um, you know, that's why I'm having it right here throughout this video. And I also went in and did some inquiry uh, around this. So after that whole lion's gate, I started painting it again and all these little dots and what it reminds me of is like the dots of Aboriginal uh, Australian, um, the Dreamtime paintings. Um, it was just like, I realized that as I was already doing it. Um, so I feel like there's some connection with there. I, this is not a tradition I know anything about. So if you have any clarity on that or anything um, about this, there's a lot of symbolism in this painting. Um, we have the sea turtles. Um, which I kind of am feeling like the whole Turtle Island concept. There's a lot about turtle symbolism um, that, that could be in here. I haven't fully gone into the symbolism of this, so I I'm, would love any insights or downloads that you have. There's also, it's hard to see, but there's this moon cycle here going from um, waning to the new moon to the full moon here and she does talk about the moon in, in the channeled message and also there's this lion uh, on the shell of the turtle the lion and also turtle are both very very protective energies um lion in a more active way turtle in a more passive way and i feel like there's there's definitely a lot of divine feminine energy being activated here um but let me just read what I was given, okay? So when I asked about the figure, because I wanted to confirm what it was, and they said it's the woman of the sea, um, they confirmed it was Mary Magdalene, but they spelled it M-E-R-I, so Mary, -E, and talking about the sea, Mare, right, being the sea. Um, so I asked Mary of the sea here, Mary Magdalene of the Sea, what her message is to humanity at this time and specifically to lightworkers. And so I'm just going to read what she said. I came to bring peace. Gaze upon my face and know the stillness that comes with true acceptance of universal law. One must accept the unfathomable mystery of the world. Not everything can be explained. It must be experienced to be known. Transcendence comes only through entering the deep. Become still, allow the flux and flow to move through you, around you. Surrender to the flow of life and you will realize that your own heartbeat is the drum that sets the pace, the rhythm that sets it all in motion. Allow your heart to dictate the rhythm of your life. Breathe to slow the heart. Breathe for peace. Your breath sets the tides. Your breath is the controlling factor. Your breath influences the currents and tides of universal energy. Like the moon to your sun, the world around you will reflect the radiance of your being. Peace within, peace without. If you will play the part of the moon, choose carefully which rays you choose to reflect. 
Maya, the changing one, is beautiful in her reflection of the eternal sun. When she reflects reflection itself, she becomes a labyrinth of illusion. Reflect to the first degree, no more. Reflect truth, not illusion. Okay, so a lot of this is really mystical and uh, might be a good thing to kind of meditate on. It feels to me like it is about the, you know, the, this healing of the deep feminine uh, and really moving into the energies of the divine feminine and activation of that. Again, if you have any insights or downloads, please do share them because it helps all of us, right? Um, a little bit more here. Again, I say the portal, this visual portal here allows for direct healing to take place. Um, this is actually representing this access portal that I mentioned before that opened up right after the Lion's Gate um, directly to the Syrian star system. Um, they say the portal allows for direct healing to take place. It is an access for portal for healing from Syrian light beings. Ask for protection through this portal. It will be made available. And it says it's also can, it's a shielding, particularly in the emotional plane and the protective power of the lion, the protection for the heart. A lion, I feel like um, I'm reading a wonderful book right now called The White Lions, something about the white lions. I'll, I can put the link in the description. Um, but it, it talks about that Syrian connection with lion. I'm only halfway through it. It's an amazing book. And I, I think I'm, it, that the lion has a lot to do with holding um, that and protecting that divine feminine, the great goddess. And then the last thing that they said here around this painting, um, this is my guidance right now, uh, protection, peace, and flow, primordial seeds, primordial seas, beginnings of time. She is life. She is divine goddess, the great mother, the embodiment, she who gives birth to all and to whom all returns. So... So this painting is feeling significant enough. I'm going to put her on my website, make her available as a print if you would like your own copy of her. And also, I'll, she'll be available, the original for sale as well. There may be one person that she's really meant for to have this original, so that link will be down there as well. So again, it feels like beautiful juncture right now. And I feel like there's going to be around the 11-11, another wave of activation um, assisting in clearing of the old energies and also um, birthing the new. Okay. Again, this is a lot. Like I mentioned, I'll be doing a reading on Facebook to support us in these energies. And by the time I post this, that'll probably already, <laughs> already be there. And then sign up to my email newsletter and or subscribe to the channel to be notified of my um, Get Crystal Clear on Your Purpose workshop coming up. And until then, remember you were born to be free.